Hi everybody, it's Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. I just want to take a moment to address a question I had on a previous video I did, and the video was pertaining to channeling spiritual guidance or spirit guides. And the question I have is what is the difference between high level and low level spiritual guidance or spirit guides? So let's start with this topic by using the example of your ancestors. Let's say that it is your, in your tradition, and I hope that it is, to continue a relationship with your ancestors or your family members after they have passed on, and also to revere the ancestors that have come before you. So, does this mean that you worship your ancestors? I hope that it doesn't. It, it should not mean that you worship them. What it means is that you revere them, you pay respect to them, you honor them, you continue a relationship with them. Now, if you have a for someone in your family who has evolved to a high spiritual level, um, perhaps they have become a saint or a folk saint, then maybe you would consider having the relationship of being devoted to them or worshiping them. Um, however, most people that you have known in your life that have passed on, they're going to be what is considered those low-level spirit guides. And that's not made to be insulting. I don't really like the high-level, low-level dichotomy, um, but those are the words that I have to describe the differences here so that we understand what, what we're talking about. Um, so a low-level spirit guide is going to help you with everyday things. Let's say that you have a great aunt Bertha, and Bertha was really great with giving relationship advice. She was really analytical, and she could see clearly into the motivations and true intentions of people, and she was very practical. So you would go to Aunt Bertha in death for the same things that you would go to her for in life. You would consult with her about things like relationships, relationship advice, um, understanding the true motiv motivations of the people in your life, um, dealing with practical details of your in and out day-to-day -day life, things of that nature. Now let's compare that to some high-level spirit spiritual guidance. Um, and I'm going to tell you a few different categories or ideas about what high-level spirits are. So in some belief systems, a high-level spirit would either be somebody who has evolved to the point where they are no longer going to reincarnate, or they are somebody who has chosen previously to make spiritual guidance um, as part of their learning process. So instead of reincarnating at this point, instead their job is to be a spirit guide to humans and to use that as a further way for themselves to grow and to learn. And then there is the category of spirits who have never been incarnated. And some of them um, choose to be spirit guides and some of them do not. And it is believed that everybody on earth has a high-level spirit guide of one of these kinds. Um, you, usually we all have a high-level spirit guide from the category of spirits that has never been incarnated. And we can also have other spirit guides from these other categories, but usually the one that's assigned to us is from the category of spirits who have never been incarnated. And it is our job to pay attention to the signs and messages that they send to us and to learn how to raise our own vibrations or create our own practices so that we can communicate and have a relationship with them. So there's someone like that around everyone. Um, other spirits that may be around that have contact with humans, um, there are a few categories of those, and I'm going to tell you the shamanic perspectives on those. So the shamans believe that there are three loose categories of reasons why um, deceased people may be hanging around humans or making contact with humans. One of them would be that the deceased does not know how to or cannot 
find their way out of this realm and into the next realm. And that is either because they are simply confused or they um, didn't have an idea of the afterlife previously and therefore have no, um, no way of finding their way to that afterlife. And so they are somehow trapped here. They can also be trapped here because of addictions. Uh, another reason that recently deceased may be making their way to people is because they either need to help the person or the person needs to help them. And that is often in finding some kind of closure about their death or in wrapping something up for them here on earth in order to help them transition. Sometimes the spirit is actually trying to help the person in their mourning process so that the spirit can leave the person behind. Another reason that the shamans believe that a spirit would be in contact with you is because they have decided to be a spirit guide. They have at some point um, made that decision that part of their life contract or their kar karmic contract will be to a be a spirit guide and then they will be coming to you for that reason. So the spirits who, who are trapped here or who are confused, those are obviously not going to be giving you high-level spiritual guidance. Um, that's one way that you can tell the difference. If someone is recently deceased and they are coming to you immediately, they're probably not ready to be doing any kind of spiritual guidance work. It's probably quite the opposite, that they need some help from you. Um, people who have been deceased for a longer period of time, they are more likely to be someone who is around to give you spiritual guidance. Um, so high-level spiritual guides, they are going to be concerned with the big picture things. They're going to be concerned namely with your spiritual progress, your spiritual growth, um, your spiritual development, and deepening your spiritual connection or um, developing and growing your spiritual gifts, things of that nature. Um, they are often not going to be concerned with mundane things. Remember, some of them have never been incarnated. They're not going to give you advice about your car or your romantic relationship, unless that relationship relates to your spiritual growth. Um, they're, they're not going to be concerned with a lot of everyday mundane things. Again, for that, you want to go to your Aunt Bertha, or maybe you've got a, a great Uncle Joe and he was a mechanic. Go to him about your car problems. Um, you have spirits that can help you with your everyday mundane things, but it's not going to be the same as your high-level spiritual guidance. Um, so that being said, high-level spirit guides, there's a lot of stuff that they really don't care about and that they don't want or care to give you information about. For instance, they are not going to be the ones to help you in your divination. They're not going to help you with timeline predictions. Um, first of all, because they believe in free will. So at any time, you can make a different decision that is going to change the outcome of your life. Now, you have predetermined certain um, lessons that you're going to learn when you're on earth and there are a multitude of different ways that you can learn those lessons but you are here to work on certain issues they might help you find a less painful way or try to um, push you in a less painful direction so that you can learn those lessons in an easier way but they're not going to take those lessons away from you and they're also not going to tell you how things are going to work out because they are going to show you options so that you can make choices. You can choose. If, if you like the path that you're on, then you can stay on the path that you're on um, if you like what the outcome is going to be of that path. But you have multiple options that you can choose that are going to change your path. So they will try to help you see those options. They will try to help you look at things in a new way. They'll try to help you see the gray areas, but they're not going to tell you very black and white, cut and dry, this is your fate, this is your destiny. Um, High-level spiritual guidance is not like that. Instead, it's going to show you options for growth, options for choices, options for seeing things in a different perspective, for learning, growing, etc. So if you are doing a lot of divination, if you're doing a lot of um, readings for yourself or for other people and you're trying to predict timelines 
and you're asking for spiritual guidance in order to predict those timelines, you are most likely not getting high-level spiritual guidance for that kind of work. Um, that If you're doing readings for other people and you want high-level spiritual guidance, then they're going to want you to be working on the spiritual development and the spiritual growth of the people that you are working for. They're not going to want to assist you in um, those everyday mundane things or predicting a fate, right? So if you, if you feel like you're getting information from spiritual guidance that is telling you things like, what a fate or destiny or future is going to be, then it's probably a low-level spirit guide. And if it's a spirit guide that was good at divination or good at um, psychic abilities when they were alive or a family of spirits that has some kind of affiliation with those abilities, then it's probably good guidance. But you have to make sure that you are not leaving yourself open to any kind of like trickster spirits. Um, things of that nature. There are, you know, spirits and uh, the deceased, they are just like people. They have different characteristics and different traits. They can be testing out their power on you, um, seeing what they can do. They can be um, tricking you, manipulating you, or having fun with you. So they will give you random information that may or may not be true, or they may play around with you a little bit to see what happens in your life because it's amusing to them. Now, that being said, I don't want you to be super afraid of stuff like that because the general principle is if whatever you're, the kind of energy that you're putting out is the energy that you're going to attract. So if you're not doing a bunch of um, negative stuff, if you're not putting out a bunch of... Uh, dark negative energy, then you're probably not going to attract a lot of stuff like that. Um, that being said, you do have to set your intentions. It doesn't have to be complicated. It's very easy to avoid these pitfalls. All you have to do is set your intentions. Um, just say it out loud or say a prayer. Um, ask for some simple guidance or visualize some simple protection for yourself. Ask for some simple protection from your ancestors or from your high-level spirit guides, and that will do the trick. It's it's usually not any more complicated than that, so don't be too afraid, but do be aware of the difference between low-level and high-level spiritual guidance. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to like the video and share the video and comment. If there's anything in this video that you would like me to elaborate on or that you have a question about, please do let me know and submit your suggestions for future videos. I'm always open to looking those over. So thanks so much for watching and take care.